This video is for the M3 calculations in assignment 14.4, which is to do with rates of heat flow due to conduction and radiation. I'll go through the calculations for the practice task that we've set, which is about looking at a cavity wall. We have our wall made out of brick and in the middle. air gap there, which is air in here, and the dimensions of this wall are 9 centimetre thick brick here, one5 centimetre air gap with a 9 centimetre brick on the other side. Call this side brick 1 and this brick 2. And either side of each of the surfaces, there's a temperature. Uh, the temperature for here is 25. So at this surface, it's 25 degrees C. And we have 24.18 and 18.2. Then 18 degrees C here. So those are our temperatures at each of the surfaces there in our wall. The wall has a surface area, so facing each side of 5 metres squared. Now what we're going to do for our wall is calculate the rate of heat transfer through there by conduction. So we'll start with that first. The conduction equations are, we'll need to know what the temperature gradient is. So this is the difference in temperatures where theta is the temperature. Then building on that, the rate of heat transfer. This K here is the thermal conductivity value. We've come across those before from the P3 task. Those values for different quantities are the different materials. And I'll just give you three. Air, brick and concrete. watts per metre per Kelvin. <coughs> Air is 0.023, brick 0 0.90, and concrete 1.40. So that these values tell you that concrete is a better conductor than all of the, these two, and air is the best insulator, worst conductor, best insulator. Last calculation or equation we can use is this. This tells you the heat flow for a given time. So this is how much heat energy is transferred. Q is often used for heat energy. And that's equal to the rate of heat flow times the time. Those are the equations, conductivity values. So let's start off with question A. Part 1. A part 1 says calculate the temperature difference between the layer of brick 1 of the wall. So the temperature gradient across brick 1 here. So the delta theta, we just want the temperature difference which is delta theta. So we do the largest temperature minus the smallest temperature. So that's 25 minus 24.18. And that is equal to 0.82. Now this will come out in either degrees C or Kelvin. Same value. 
I'm going to be using the one in Kelvin just so that you can see that I'm using Kelvin all the way through. That's our temperature difference. Next, part two, we want to calculate the temperature gradient across brick one. And that is delta theta over this, this question here, over L, where L is the thickness here, which you can see is nine centimetres. Now, we need to convert the centimetres into metres if we're going to calculate it. So this would be nine times 10 to the minus two metres, or 0 0.09 metres. <coughs> this one would be 0.015 metres, nine centimetres, same as the other one. So we take our temperature difference here, 0 0.82, Divide it by L, which is 0 0.090, and our temperature difference, our temperature gradient, sorry, comes out as 9.11 kelvins per metre. So I'm using kelvins rather than 3C. That's question two. Now, question three calculate the rate of heat flow through brick one. So we'll use, we need to use this equation, this is our rate of heat flow here. <clears throat> this is the temperature gradient, we just calculated that. This is the area, which is over here, and then we have the thermal conductivity value, which we find from our table. We're using brick, so this is the value that we need, 0 0.90. So for brick, so put the values in there, 0 0.90 times by 5, times by that value there, 9.11, and that will come out as 41 watts. So give, you, give units for all of your values that you use when you state them as an answer. This is 41 watts. That's the rate of heat flow through the brick. That means that delta Q is equal to power times times. So delta Q for one second would just be equal to 41 times 1, which is 41. So that means that in one second, 41 joules of heat energy would travel through the brick. Now we'll do the same series of calculations, but for this air gap here. This is part four. I'll work out the temperature gradient directly rather than doing delta theta first. So this is 24.18 minus 18.82 over the thickness, which is 0 0.015. Temperature gradient is 357 kelvins per meter. And then power, uh, or heat transfer, I'll just state the K value for air this time is 0 0.023. So you know where that value came from. Came from. And P is equal to 0 0.023, that's that value there. Multiplied by A, which is still 5, so the fact that we're using air doesn't change the fact that the surface area here is 5 meters squared. So times by 5 multiplied by our temperature gradient here, 357, and that comes out as 41 also. So that's our heat rate of heat transfer, and then the actual energy that flows through in one second would be the same value, 41 joules. So we've done the calculations for this layer and this layer, 
Uh, the question also includes calculating for brick two, but as you can appreciate, its brick has the same thermal conductivity value as the original brick, and it also has the same thickness. So that for that reason, we would expect to get exactly the same value. And then for question six, you can appreciate, or you can see, that the rate of heat transfer for each layer is the same. Okay, that's our conduction calculations. Now we move on to the calculations for radiation. So I'll clear this and then we'll get started on that. For the radiation calculations, we use this equation, P is equal to E sigma a t to the power of 4. That's t raised to the power of 4, not everything. So just that t there. E is the emissivity. And that will change depending on the surface that you're calculating for. Sigma, this is a Greek letter, sigma. That's uh, Stefan constant. Now, it's a constant, so that means it always has the same value, just as pi has a value 3.142. So this is 5.7 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per square meter per Kelvin. And Whereas before, when we were calculating these temperature differences, it didn't matter if it's in degrees C or Kelvin, here it must be in Kelvin, the temperature. Okay, we're going to calculate the rate of heat transfer by radiation through a 5 square metre wall, where the internal temperature is 18 degrees C, and question one, is for ordinary pain on the wall, which has an emissivity value of 0.92. So we, we can just plug everything straight into the equation except for the temperature. The temperature is 18 degrees C plus 273. Let's turn it into Kelvin. Uh, which is 291. So we'll need to use that. Now that's not going to change for situation two, so we'll be able to use that again as well. Now we can put them in. So it's 0 0.92 times by this value here, 5.7 times 10 to the minus 8, and multiplied by the area, 5 square meters, multiplied by the temperature. 291 to the power of 4. So I'm just putting that in brackets to indicate it. I'm raising that to the power of 4. Once you put that into your calculator, it will come out as 1880 watts if you round it up. That's the rate of heat transfer for ordinary paint. Question 2 we do the same calculation except we use low E paint here. has an emissivity value of 0.58. Put that into the question, so 0 into the equation, 0 0.58 times by 5.7 times 10 to the minus 8. You can see I'm using the same constant. Times by 5, because the surface area hasn't changed. And then times by 291 to the power of 4, because the temperature didn't change either. And we'll get a value of 1185. Watts. And that's how you do the calculations for heat transfer by radiation. By a quick comparison of our values, you can see that this is lower than this. So the heat transfer by, use, by radiation has been reduced by using the low heat plane.